Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're doing a comparison video now. I actually have started this video several times but I'm just going to kind of do a stream of consciousness and throw in some B-roll. I want to do a comparison between two very popular 65% kits. And first up is the KVD67 Lite. Now this keyboard is now currently in round four and it is quite a popular keyboard. It has been on sale for as cheap as 99, but regularly sells for 129 plus shipping, roughly makes it about 150. Um, but this is a very good 65% kit. Now this is the Gas 67 by CIY. Upside down. This came out in the last few months. It is a very nice 65% kit that has a lot of similarities with the KVD67, but is not in the same league, but is a 65% kit that comes in at around $50 shipped. So about a third of the price of what the KVD67 comes in at. Now, what are the similarities and what are the differences? And as we can see, these are both 65% kits with the blocker layout. Granted, the GAS 67 does have a switch um, that is basically a, a Windows Mac mode switch. I don't know why they decided to put one there. It doesn't make much sense to me. I never use it. I don't know many of it do. This does not have a switch. Though, as you can see, the layouts are almost exactly the same size. The width of the GAS 67 is just a tad bit wider. And you could probably tell because of that bevel. It does have a different angle. It is a lot, the edges are a lot more straight. There's not much curve to them or chamfer. But as you can see with the KBD67, it has a really nice curved side profile, which I actually quite enjoy. Another thing that you may have noticed just from the top view of these two keyboards is that the KBD67 has these metal insert nuts into the frame. Now that ensures that you could unscrew and screw the top off as many times as you'd like and you'd run very little risk of stripping a screw. Um, and if you did, it was, it'd probably be more due to user error. Now with this, the GAS 67, you do not see those studs as this does use screws, but they screw straight into plastic. Now, one caveat I must give for anybody who does get the GAS 67, get all of your mod mods done prior to closing it up. If you do need to open it back up and any time that you need to screw it closed or screw it open, do it with a good screwdriver and do it really slow. Don't use an electric screwdriver. Um, or if you do, don't turn it on. Use it manually. Make sure you've got a nice good bit that fits, not one that's a little loose or one that may be too tight and start skipping because you will quickly strip the screws. If you really want to make sure, then you might want to try some inserts in there. Now, I have an extra GAS 67 kit and I think I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot because I do have some M4 inserts or M three or M2, uh, different sizes. Um, and though, if I screw up, that's that. But I think I can do it as long as I'm careful about it. So I'll, I'm gonna work on, on doing that. What I'm thinking is basically just drilling out the hole so that I can stick it in there and then, you know, so that at least it goes in a little bit, then I can press it in with uh, the uh, soldering iron. I just don't want to go out of the way and you know screw up that hole altogether so but anyway that's i apologize for going down that route <clears throat> now the usb port on the kbd67 light is on the leftmost side the usb c port on the kbd67 is right in the middle now as you can see this is actually on a daughter board but the flex on either one of these boards, while it's there, don't get me wrong, 
there's a lot more flex on these boards than say a lot of your 75 percent gasket mount kits <laughs> but it is definitely not a significant amount of flex they both have very similar although if i had to pick one over the other i would say the gas 67 has a little bit more flex just a little bit more flex um they both do come with USB-C cables in in the box. Uh, they're just coiled cables. Now, granted, the, the Gas 67 does come with color matching cables. I mean, it's not an exact color match, but it's close enough. While the uh, KBD 67 does come with a case, uh, which is really nice. And it comes with a, more of a your old school telephone style USB-C rubber cable. Now, I've heard that latest revisions are going to be including color matching cables i don't know for sure they have not been shipped out yet um anyway so we have a lot of similarities here they both come with a pad for above the um for above the pcb and it's basically for all intents and purposes it's a uh it's kind of like an eva foam layer it's hard to tell there but it's laying on top and this one has it as well now this one does have a back pour on pa pad and this one does not I was almost tempted to do a tempest mod to it to kind of simulate for when I do the, the the sound test but then it wouldn't be fair because it wouldn't be stock and right now these are two they're both stock the only thing that I've done to either one of these is just tune the uh, stabilizers to make sure that they sound good so for the sound test at the end uh, i do have the same switches in them i am using the Akko starfish these are a, a very nice decent linear switch um, you can look up the specs they're similar to a, a black or a yellow i forget but it's a it's a very decent good sounding not your deepest but well it's one of my favorite uh, budget linears because it it's it's very consistent so that's what I'll be I'm using in both of these. They have been lubed, not filmed. So now while this is a pricier board, the KBD67 light does cost more money. It ha offers more value. I mean, it does come with the metal screw-in, so you know you can get back and forth, you know, open it up, try out different mods if you like. Not that you can't with this, but if you do not replace the screws of the inserts, you're not gonna get that many times of opening and closing it back up. Um, like I said, I'm gonna make a video. Hopefully I won't destroy the keyboard. Uh, if I do, then I guess I'm gonna have to get to 3D printing, designing and 3D printing me a case uh, for this keyboard. Because uh, I actually, don't get me wrong, I've used both of these keyboards for roughly a week as daily drivers, and I enjoyed them both just as much. Uh, there's, while the KBD67 doesn't have as much flex or bounce, I do like the feel of it. It feels a little more uh, anchored. I don't know if that's the right word. It's just, I mean, you know, they roughly weigh about the same once built. But again, perhaps it's the fact that it has that muted layer on the back that gave me that. Um, I do want to know what this one's going to sound like. Um, once I've actually got in there and, and done some mods because I do actually intend to, um, if it's with this one or another one, do a little bit of a silicone pour or perhaps just uh, do a butyl um, rubber mats. I'm still not sure. I'm gonna see what I can do. Probably a silicone because it is a uh, translucent, though part of me is actually considering to spray painting this um, and seeing what kind of craziness I can come up with there. I don't know. I'm going to try a couple of things because I actually, you know, like I said, I've got an extra one. So anyway, the KBD 67 light, like I said, on sale, about 99 bucks, but on average 129 plus roughly 20 bucks in shipping, $25 in shipping. So it's roughly $150, give or take, depending on, you know, what I do know that there's plenty that come on mech market and ebay but those usually get snatched up pretty quick but i've seen some people pick them up for much cheaper that said these are both budget this is budget in the budget world this is budget in the enthusiast world in my opinion as based on their prices and based on the build quality so 
Now we do have to take into consideration that this is right here, the R3. It has had three revisions. Now primarily they've added more colors, but they have made minor fixes along the way. So this is the first revision of this one. Now is CIY going to make another revision of this? We don't know. CIY is not a company that actually does any marketing that I know of, unless they only do it in the Southeast Asian region. But we do know that CIY is known for putting out some pretty damn good keyboards. I mean, this is the uh, their uh, this is the um, the Test 68 or the uh, the Newfie version of the Tester 68 which a lot of people have got. Yes, it's a wireless only, but it is a great kit, especially a great kit to learn on. Plus it sounds pretty good straight out of the box. Um, they, they also have put out the CI YX77, which is a very nice TKL. And a couple other boards, which I don't have handy at the moment, like the Tester 84, uh, which is currently on sale at Keep Monkey. Uh, TES84, TES84 gets you 30% off. Uh, I'll try to put it down in the comments if I remember. Anyway, trying to focus on these boards. CIY has been putting out, since the Tester 68, it appears they have really picked up some steam and have put out some really decent boards at a very good price point. I mean, the Tester 68. I originally got it for $19.95. I know some people paid up to $50 for it. I think the hype and everything is starting to come back down. I just picked up the new colorway, the pink, for $24. Um, yeah, $24.62, I want to say. You know, shipped from AliExpress. So, um, it's definitely come down in price. And for, I mean, I know it doesn't come, it, I could have gotten it with switches and cabs, but I've got plenty of those, so... But without switches and caps, $25, under $30 for a 65% a kit that, I mean, sounds pretty good out of the box and sounds even better once modded and gives you the ability to mod and test things out, you know, without the risk of, you know, losing too much. I mean, things can always go south, but at least if things go south, it's only a $25 loss as opposed to a several hundred dollar loss, which I recommend a lot of folks, you know, if you're going to get into this, even if you do have the budget, to buy these more expensive boards. If you ever intend to get in there and do any amount of modification, start with the cheaper ones. Start with the cheaper ones. I mean, honestly, if you think that eventually you're gonna buy one of these, why not start with one of these? And play with it, maybe even break it, but learn what you like and what you don't like so that you can take that knowledge and pass it on to this board. But again, like I said, I use both of these boards on a daily basis and I didn't have problems. So the issues with the screws may not be that much of an issue for a lot of folks who are just going to put it together and say, I'm done. Um, now, granted, I would recommend you do the Tempest mod on this. That's the only thing that I would recommend. I mean, it, it, there is not much space for hollowness. You don't really hear that much hollowness. I think it would benefit from, from silicone. But if you're only going to do one mod to it, do the Tempest mod because of the fact that it does not include that pour on sandwich in the back. So, what I'm trying to say is while both of these boards are great, they are in different realms, but I think they're the best of either realm. This is the best of the budget enthusiast realm. And as far as a 65% kit, that yes, it may not be metal, but it's well built for plastic. And it can sound very good. I mean, it sounds pretty good stock. I have not touched this. I mean, except for the stabilizers, which I've done on both. It sounds very decent and it feels great to type on. But the same thing with this one. And again, if you're not going to be modding it, opening it up, you know, and you're gonna be fine with it, this is this is a great kit. I mean, and for the price, for what you get, I mean you're getting a full kit. It's not a pre-built. Yes, you don't have the switches and the keys, and I mean yes. You can spend more. <laughs> I've seen keycaps that cost four or five times the amount that this keyboard costs, but that's that's neither here nor there. Once you build it, you know, and say you just go with some Akko switches, so about forty dollars in switches, roughly, give or take, maybe thirty-five, and then you get a nice clone set for another forty bucks. So you're looking in all in about one hundred and thirty bucks. That's you know less than this one bare bones ship. So you know, like I said, 
that's where you have to look at the differences and where they matter. If you're not going to open this keyboard up after you build it, you should be fine. I mean, obviously, be careful even on that first screw. I mean, then this should really account anytime you're opening anything up that's electronic. There's tons of electronic things that use um, that do not have the metal inserts for screws, the metal grubs, um, and they're fine. But you're not opening them on a regular basis. As keyboard hobbyists, we tend to open up our keyboards. Let's try this. Let's try that. We'll see what how this sounds. How that sounds. Uh, let's try some polyfill versus some, you know. So that's the only thing that I'd say that you take into consideration when doing this. Again, hopefully I can find a way to insert some insert scrubs, screw nubs. But I am actually in the process of trying to get into contact with someone at CIY to see if I can, I mean, even just begin a relationship with someone there and try to kind of give them some feedback from the budget community uh, and perhaps help at least maybe provide them with some better, some ideas as, you know, moving forward. I'm sure they're not going to stop making keyboards. So putting us in touch with that company, I think would help us to, I mean, because if this had metal inserts and cost 10 bucks more, it would still be a, <laughs> an easy yes. So anyway, both of these kits are great. Both of these kits will deliver a great experience. This one's going to cost you more, but it is built a little bit better. This one's going to cost you less, but you're really not going to miss out, especially if you're not going to be opening it up left and right. So while this is a head to head or a versus, I want to count or basically name both of these as winners in their own respective field because they're both great keyboards. And I really can't say too much negative except for this one, the metal inserts. I've said it. Other than that, they come in a great kit. You put them together. Um, you know, the stabilizers come in a separate pack. Uh, come with all the screws, the pads, with the um, washers. Now, one one caveat with the Gas 67, the screw and stabs are slightly different. Um, I do believe you could stick different ones in there. It looks like anyway. I have not tried it. But if for some reason you don't have the screws for the ones that come with it, which I have only heard one instance, um, the screws are of different size than standard uh standoff screw and stab stabs but they both do have screw and stab uh, but it does look like these would fit standard screw and stabs anyway i'm just saying if you don't have the screws or if you lose the screws they're not standard size screws for the screw and stabs so that caveat out of the way come up um, with a valid enough reason to not buy either one unless you know basically it's it, your budget should decide that but both of these are great keyboards in my opinion and this is just the opinion of one person that is i mean i got into the hobby a while ago and then i wasn't as deep into it and it's really over the last year that i've i've fell deep down the rabbit hole as many of you may know so it's just my opinion but like i said i i like both of these boards i was able to use both of these boards on a daily basis uh without issue and i enjoyed using both of these boards so it really comes down to your preference and what you, how much you want to spend. And if you want to start, I would say start on the Gas 67, especially if you're newer uh, to the hobby. You're going to learn. You're going to learn to be careful, especially with those screws. And you're just going to learn the basic construction and what all the different parts are inside of here. Now, um, there isn't a tutorial video on how to build this but it is fairly simple but I've even done a live stream when I first got it and there's a lot of other people on YouTube that have done live streams so uh, because KBD I believe they have a specific one that they made um, like I said CIY doesn't really have much of a marketing presence if at all so maybe another reason why they are able to get these two customers for cheaper a thought to have well anyway in closing i want to say that i think 
you know, these are great boards. Now, there's another thing I wanted to add real quick. This, like I said, the revisions have included more colors. They're currently up to, I want to say, 18 different case colors. So this one has a lot more choices in colors. Well, this one only comes in three. This green, a purple, and a black. They're all a translucent type um, color. But I do plan to make a video here in the near future on how to spray paint both already, you know, translucent and opaque plastics and how to make them look as close to factory finish as possible you know with a spray paint i mean uh, i'm not gonna expect everybody to go out and buy an airbrush so in closing both of these keyboards are great if you want to save your money and see what it's all about start with the gas 67 because you're not going to be missing out much more from this but you can always move up to this but they're both enjoyable both great as daily drivers and both sound extremely decent i'm going to close this video out with a sound test of each like i said the only thing that's been done is tune the stabilizers other than that the switches are lubed they're both running clone sets of double shot pbt nautilus so we should get a fairly decent comparison of the two and how they sound stock i hope that this video helped for you guys to decide, or at least help you to learn a little bit more about keyboards. Anyway, for now, the sound test, and until the next transmission, peace.